Hi, this is Shay Jackson with Height Math. In today's video, we will be discussing what type of questions did my eighth grader have on their star math test. Let's get started. Now, I know you're wondering, why do I want to know that? That is a good question. My answer would be, knowledge is power. So even though you may not understand, remember, or even know how to solve the questions we will be reviewing in this video, having a first level or an overview of what your eighth graders tested on in the star math test will help you because once you get their star math results, let's say for instance, their performance was meets grade level and you're excited and you say, great, but take a look at the red highlighted box, which displays the categories. Let's say this is your student and he or she scored zero of four in the numerical representations and relationships category and also a zero of seven in the data analysis and personal financial literacy category. So even though they met the grade level expectations, it's obvious that there are some math areas and concepts they are struggling in. So as a parent, having an idea of what type of questions they were assessed on will empower you because now you know the category and we'll talk about TEKS that can kind of narrow down the math concepts so that you can help them with reinforcement and enrichment. And you don't have to know how to do these problems, but at least allow height math, of course, and other tools and resources help you or walk alongside you so that you can build a solid foundation for your child's math journey, okay? Now, the star math test was broken up into four categories. They are numerical representations and relationships, geometry and measurement, computation and algebraic relationships, also data analysis and personal financial literacy. So just to give a quick understanding of what uh, the TEKS is about, I'm sorry, the star test, that are based on TEKS, there's another video where I outline the star math results that goes into this a little bit more. If you want to see that video, it will be linked in the description box. So let's talk about TEKS. Basically, the TEKS for the star math test are skills and concepts the state of Texas believes eighth graders should learn in order to be successful for that current year and also the upcoming year, as well as having college and career readiness. The TEKS are divided into two questions. They are readiness and supporting. Let's look at the difference between the two. For readiness questions, these are questions that are deemed essential for success for the current grade level, as I mentioned before. They also help the student get prepared for the next grade level. They support college and career readiness, and they address broad and deep concepts, skills, and ideas. That means that they're pretty, um, it's not like a basic two plus two, but like a word problem that the student has to really think about it in order to solve that problem. So for supporting questions, these are questions that are introduced or reinforced for the current grade, but also they'll be reintroduced in the upcoming years. They play a role in the students, um, for the, the students' grade level, but they're not a central role. That are, uh, the central role is the readiness questions. And also they address more narrowly defined ideas. With saying all that, let's look at the categories and dive in and look at some of the types of questions in the readiness and also supporting standards. 
So starting with numerical representations and relationships, we see that there is one rating as standard, 8.2D, and there are a few four supporting standards. And what we're going to do is look at some sample problems based on those TEKS. All right, so starting with our rating as standard, 8.2D, order a set of real numbers arising from mathematical and real world context. And if you look at the sample problem, this satisfies that TEK 8.2D. We have a chart. It talks about um, students on a field, uh, a class trip. It shows a table about them. And it, you're asked, or the student is asked, to list the real numbers in the table in order from least to greatest. In looking at those answer choices, you see their decimals, fractions and percents and those are called real numbers okay so this is the type of question your student had to answer on the star math test let's take a look at some more this is a supporting standard teak 8.2 c convert between standard decimal notation and scientific notation looking at our sample problem that's what um, that matches the teak the student was given a word problem where there was a decimal notation, the 0 0.00072, and the answer choices are in scientific notation. And basically, the student had to answer the question um, with the correct scientific notation. Let's look at another sample problem. This is TEK 8.2D. I'm sorry, 8.2B. Approximate the value of an irrational number, including pi and square roots of numbers less than 225, and locate the rational number approximation on a number line. In our sample problem, we see that there's a number line, the square root is 92, and the student had to choose which point represents that square root, okay? So again, as you see, there's a TEEK, but now as a parent, you can see a real life problem, not just words and not being able to visualize what type of question your students had. Let's move on to the computations and algebraic relationships category. Now, we will have sample questions for both the readiness and supporting standards, but there will not be a problem for each one this would be a pretty long video okay so there are example two examples of readiness standards and two examples of supporting standards let's dive in so for our readiness standards teak 8.4b it says graph proportional relationships interpreting the unit rate as the slope of the line that models the relationship and in our sample problem you see that there's a slope and the student had to answer the correct the correct response or letter that best described the rate of change for the situation displayed. Let's look at another readiness standard, 8.4c. Use data from a table or graph to determine the rate of change or slope and y-intercept in mathematical and real world problems. Here we have a mathematical problem and it's asking what are the slope and y-intercept based on the two ordered pairs given. Let's look at some supporting standards. And again, I know that in looking at these problems, you may be thinking, Shay, I have no clue of what you're talking about which is fine, like I said before, but at least you'll know and you can see what your eighth grader was responsible for, okay? That it's not the type of math that you had in when you were younger or when you were in eighth grade, but at least get past your fear or not understanding to be able to look and see, okay, let's say Christy or Johnny has a weak area in geometry and measurement he needs help with that or she needs help with that okay I can find 
uh, problems or reach out and have and ask someone how can I help my student in this area so that they can be stronger in math and we're not asking and we're not saying that you want your children to be math superheroes which would be great in my book but at least to do well in math have confidence in math more than what they have um, right now okay so let's look at a supporting standard TEK 8.8a write one variable equations or inequalities with variables on both sides that represent problems using rational number coefficients and constants and this in the sample problem this is what we have you see the inequality the greater than or less than sign notates that this is an uh, inequality and the X there's a variable on both sides we see a constant as well so this fulfills or this is a problem that your student was tested on to see if they really understood and this isn't like one of the central problems like we talked about it's just a supporting it's a supporting concept that is introduced in eighth grade and will be introduced I know for sure in algebra one um, and maybe even in algebra two as well so have them having a strong foundation in these type of math concepts now will help them in uh, the, their future Let's look at another supporting standard problem, TEK 8.5e, solve problems involving direct variation, okay? And we see the value of y varies directly with, a, uh, with x, and the students are given values. And this is a pretty simple problem. If you, if you notice, as we're going through the supporting standards, there were some that were um, that took a lot of thought, but some are simple computation like this one. And if you notice the readiness standards, it does. They have to read their things. They have to understand what information do I need to solve the problem? How do I solve the problem? And um, things of that nature. So it is a very deep, most readiness standard questions are deep questions. It takes some thought. Moving on to geometry and the geometry and measurement category. Okay, here are our readiness standards and supporting standards. Let's look at some sample problems. Readiness standard TEK 8.7b, use previous knowledge. So this means that, of course, your student was introduced to this formula or triangular prisms in a previous grade okay so this is not the first time that they should have seen triangular prisms so use previous previous knowledge of surface area to make connections to the formulas for lateral and total surface area and determine solutions for problems involving rectangular prisms triangular prisms and cylinders so here we have our triangular prism and yes the student is asked to find the lateral surface area in square me in square centimeters let's look at another example stay with me <laughs> a uh, for teak 8.7a solve problems involving the volume of cylinders cones and spheres and in this question it talks about a ball that's shaped like a, a sphere and the student is asked to find out the closest uh, the measurement of the the measurement closest to the volume of the ball in cubic centimeters let's look at um, a supporting standard here is a cylinder 8.6 8.6a says describe the volume formula v is equal to bh of a cylinder in terms of its base area and its height and in our sample problem we see that we have a cylinder we notice that yes we have the formula v is equal to bh it's telling what b represents and we are looking for an expression to find the value of b one more supporting standard this one is teak 8.10d model the effect on linear and area measurements of dilated two dimensional shapes 
A preschool has a rectangular field and a rectangular playground that are, that are similar in shape. Each dimension of the field is 3.2 times the corresponding dimension of the playground. Okay, so again, yes, this does match the T. Last category, I know you are super excited. <laughs> Data analysis and personal financial literacy. We have our readiness and our supporting standards. Let's look at some examples. The readiness standard, TEK 8.12D, calculate and compare similar, I'm sorry, simple interest and common interest earnings. And in this example, we have a young lady that's investing $15,000 with 4% AM annual simple interest, excuse me, and we have to find out how much interest will she earn on that investment in three years. So yes, eighth graders are learning about personal financial literacy. Let's look at another readiness standard. TEK 8.5D, use a trend line that approximates the linear relationship between bivariate sets of data to make predictions. In looking at our sample problem, we see that we have a scatter plot. It has a trend line and it's asking information. Let's look at a couple of supporting standards and then we are finished. TEK 8.11a, Construct a scatter plot and describe the observed data to address questions of association such as linear, nonlinear, and no association between bivariate data. Here we have another scatter plot, another scatter plot again, and the student is asked to draw a conclusion based on this scatter plot. Last example. This is a supporting standard, TEK 8.12G, estimate the cost of a two-year and four-year college education, including family contribution, and devise a periodic savings plan for accumulating the money needed to contribute to the total cost of attendance for at least the first year of college. And in our example, Ms. Alejandra, Ms. Alejandra is discussing college with her her family and she wants to attend it shows how much it's going to take for her to attend the college how much her family will be able to pay and how much she is going to have to save for in order to attend that first year you made it and that means you will get a freebie our freebie is an eighth grade, a breakdown of the eighth grade readiness and supporting standards with the accompanying set, uh, sample questions. And it'll be a good idea. I know that school is out and it's the summer when I'm recording this video, but just to see if your student can answer the questions, okay? Lastly, Hype Math is having a summer math enrichment program for rising four to ninth graders starting June 18th. And there will be another video to discuss further the summer math enrichment program for rising or incoming ninth graders. But just to give you a sneak peek, it's basically over the categories we discussed and it drills down further into the different TEKS, um, the problems, how different tools and resources that parents can use to help their children um, get ready or teens get ready to be a freshman in high school. This has been Shay Jackson with Hype Math. Talk to you later.